Okay, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here and we are back with another tournament replay analysis. This time we are taking a look at the Little Cup Premier League. Uh, so this is my analysis on our week 5 matches. If you're interested in analyzing some high level Little Cup gameplay, feel free to stick around. But I don't think there's really much else to say. You guys know the deal with these videos. Uh, we'll be going through all the games and hopefully it will be uh, fun to listen to and watch. So... Let's get into it. Game number one, we have me, the King Carp, facing off against Raj Shu. So, uh, if you guys read the title correctly, I did bring a Morlel this week into Little Cup Premier League, and uh, I won with it. So, let's talk about how exactly this went down. So, team preparation-wise, I looked at the team, and I really liked the idea, or looked at the scout, and I really liked the idea of Morlel. So, I had a team that, I think, honestly, Ace built the majority of it. I think we, like, talked about the six Pokemon Um for like five minutes i was i was out on vacation like all week last week so i had to play this at like saturday night at like midnight right before i flew back home so i didn't get a bunch of time to test with the team but i did earlier in the week and i basically kind of narrowed it down to like this six so i like the foo pawn uh moral combination here so instead of using a poison i like the idea of using moral um it seemed fairly good it seemed it's a good check to stuff like timber as we see here carvana even onyx it can handle relatively well so i like the i like the idea of moral going into this match and obviously it paid off pretty well here as it covers uh, a lot of what the opponent brought um obviously ponyta magnemite and porygon aren't ideal or marini even but it should be okay um the rest of the team is pretty standard stuff, you know, Fu, Natu, Pawn. Uh, I'm bringing a Diglett with a Violite just to cover for stuff like Magby in case that came up. And then I'm using a Staryu because uh, I really like Staryu right now. I think it's really, really good, uh, especially if you're running like Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. That's a really solid set right now. Um, just because 19 speed is really nice. Um, analytic Hydro, Analytic Ice Beam, and Analytic T-Bolt is pretty difficult to switch into as it's a pretty, it's, it's a nice secondary check to stuff like Tyrant as, as well. So that's kind of my thought process with the team. Um, Opponent's team is definitely interesting. When I loaded it into this thing at preview, I didn't really... Uh, it wasn't what I anticipated, right? It looks very old. Um, no Mianfu is always interesting. Magnemite is interesting. Uh, and Porygon. Like, that offensive core is definitely potent. Um, so I was thinking one of the two have to be a Scarfer, and the other one's like maybe just like a regular special attacker. So either like Agility, Porygon, and then like um, Scarf Mag, or Scarf Porygon, and like Berry Juice Magnemite, or something like that. So... That was my thought process. Timber I thought was interesting, um, but again, I wasn't too scared of that. I have Morlo plus Natu, which handles, like, shuts that down pretty hard. Marini is definitely annoying for my Morlo, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but it is going to be a little awkward to switch into. And then Ponyta, I feel pretty good about. I can trap it with my Diglett. Um, I have my Staryu as a Fire-type resist, and I'm going to play this game... I'm going to play the early game. I'm going to preserve my Mianfu's Violite as long as possible to ensure that I can hold off against that Porygon. And then the Onyx, again, is not too scary. We have Morlo, we have Staryu, we have Mianfu, and we also have Diglett to Trap at some point. So I like my matchup. I also noticed right off the bat that Morlo's Spore is free. It can put something to sleep, and there's no Absorber, no Natu, no Pharaoh Seed, no nothing, no Fungus. So I really like that aspect of my matchup here as well. So my game plan here is honestly like trying to win with my Mianfu. Um, if I can trap the Marini, then Mianfu's HJK becomes a lot more easy to click. And I really like that out. And then I can also use my Staryu to help kind of break past this team. But it's going to come down to analyzing and figuring out what the team, the opponent's sets are. So let's get into the actual game here. Um, let's see. We're going to see the Timber lead from the opponent. I'm going to lead off with Staryu. So my thought process here, honestly, probably not the greatest lead. I wasn't anticipating Timber lead because I thought, I thought personally Morla lead was very obvious um, to try to get a Spore off. So I thought my opponent would lead off with Pony and I was like, okay, well, my best bet versus Pony is something like Staryu or Diglett. I was going to lead Diglett, but then I was very scared that this is somehow like a Trace Porygon. And if I get trapped turn one, I'm in a really bad spot. So leading Diglett just seemed like an awful idea. So I figured Staryu was like the best matchup against that. Also matches well into Tyrant or Onyx, can T-Bolt the Marini and kind of, kind of go from there, right? So... That's, that was my thought process with the lead. Obviously, Timber is not the lead that I wanted, but it's fine because I can pivot into my Moral pretty easily on this thing as my opponent is going to go into Porygon. So, Porygon right off the bat reveals to be Trace. So, already my thought process is starting to 
or my thoughts about like Scarf Porygon and like Trapper Mag or like Offensive Mag is already out of the picture. And basically what I'm thinking is, okay, this has to be a Scarf Mag now because it's Defensive Porygon. Like you need some offensive pressure with like Analytic or something. So this is probably Scarf Mag. Um, so Moral um, doesn't like... At this point, I decided to take the Ice Beam just because I'm like, let me put something to sleep here. I can take any one hit, Spore, and then Synthesis back up. And I don't really mind getting T-Waved either, either was my thought process. But yeah. So in the back of my head, what I'm thinking also at this point is that if this is Scarf Mag, then I really have to keep my Diglett as healthy as possible um, to like hopefully trap it at some point. Like sacks, keep something as a sack and then trap it at some point. So I am going to put this Porygon to sleep and I can allow them to burn a turn as I just Synthesis back up. So... That's fine. I'm going to pivot into my pawn now, just in case they wake up and try to T-wave me. We're in a fine spot. If they try to double, um, the only double I can see them really making here was maybe um, Magnemite, maybe, um, or Marini, which pawn can get rocks up on. So I was like, oh, this is fine. They are going to burn that second turn. And now I know they're not going to want to get knocked. I was thinking about going for rocks here, but my thought process was they're just going to defog them right after. And like, yeah, that gives me a free turn, but why don't I get more out of this turn by knocking off the timber, basically? Because that's going to set up for this thing to actually be, ki be killed by HJK. Because I told you, my win con at this point is winning with my Mianfu. Any Marini team is always going to struggle versus Mianfu because um, Marini can get trapped. And the fact that this is like a slow Porygon means that HJK becomes a lot easier to click. So removing not timbers uh, a Violite. Uh, is going to open that up big time for me. So I'm going to knock it off here. Decide not to even worry about getting up rocks. I'll be able to get them up later. Um, I'm pretty confident, especially because that Porygon is going to be coming in and out relatively often with not, if I can bring my not to in. So I'm going to go more low here as my opponent decides to go for mock. And they do get paralyzed, which is good for me. And they're not going to go into Magnemite, and I'm going to Moonblast this thing. So at this point, I'm pretty confident it's Scarf. It could be Juice, but I checked the Calc, and you can't really tell based off of this uh, damage if it's Scarf or like offensive Berry Juice. So I had an idea. I, you know, I have a couple of thoughts here. I can stay in on the Volt, on the Flash Cannon. I should be able to live, and also on the Volt Switch, obviously. So I could just synthesis up. Morlo kind of sits on a lot of the team. Um, but I was afraid of maybe like a Steel Beam or something stupid. Uh, which actually no, I was I wasn't even scared of Steel Beam because like I end up going into Mianfu. So like I wasn't really scared of Steel Beam because I don't think I would have gone into Mianfu if I was scared of that. But I just didn't have a great switch in. I really wanted to go Diglett, but I felt that was too risky. Uh, perhaps I should have, um, considering I would be able to live any one hit. Uh, but then they could have, like, um, then if they're, like, Berry Juice Recover and all that. I'm oh, sorry, Berry Juice Recycle, then they can endure my hit and everything can just get really awkward. So I decided just to pivot into Mianfu as my best mid ground. My thought process was if they flash can run a good spot, if they Volt Switch, they have no way of punishing that with, like, a coughing to deny regeneration. So it's fairly safe for me. Um, and I want to keep my, I want to just, don't want to risk my, uh, Morlo if I can help it too much. As, even if I can take the hit, it's not like I'm going to be able to synthesis all of it back. Uh, I take like 70 to 80 and only heal off 50, right? So I'm taking net 30 for that. They decided to go into Ponyta here as I'm going to go for the fake out. My thought process here is let me figure out the damage. Obviously, I'm risking Flame Body. I'm not denying that. But it's going to be important to decide. I need to know if this is Violite or Berry Juice. And I know it's Berry Juice now. So um, fortunately, I don't get burnt. And I'm going to pivot into my Staryu here as my opponent is going to go for that Blitz right off the bat. Wild Charge there could have been bad, but I figured they'd Blitz um, off, off rip there. Because Wild Charging into a Mianfu is just really, really... Because I, if I just HJK, I knock them out and it's really tough. So... I go into Star here, and I'm going to pivot back into Mianfu, basically covering a couple of options. I know their best option here is to um, go Porygon, and it also covers the option if they decide to go for the Speed Tie and try to Wild Charge me, which would be very bad, but it would at least cover for that as well, because I can just uh, eat that hit, fake them out again, or slow U-turn into my Diglett and then trap it or something like that. Um, obviously not exactly that case, but... Basically, it covers both options. I can kind of pivot around with regen, uh, especially. So I catch the Porygon. This is obviously a good situation to be in as the Timber is going to come in now and I'm just going to go for another knock, basically putting them range into HJK and knocking them out. So knocking them off early actually ended up being very valuable because I was able to remove them outright. And now that I know their only form of removal is gone, I can put rocks up again on the Porygon, which is definitely going to want to come in on again like Natu or uh, Staryu and I can throw up my rocks which is really going to limit the pony from being super threatening so I've been able to keep my Mianfus of Eyelight so far which is great Marini is going to come in here and I'm going to U-turn here this was a tricky turn um I didn't know what exactly my best play was to be honest with you I end up going pawn 
and my thought process was oh i want to get my rocks up right because of because of pony and i want to break onyx potential sturdy as well and also if this is berry juice mag breaking it sturdy i guess could be valuable in some respects um although it always can endure and be annoying in that sense but you get the idea i think maybe the better play was to go not to on this turn not to violite isn't super valuable obviously ice beam pori is still going to hit her hard magnemite's volt switch is still going to hit her hard uh, Marini is going to eventually knock it off, and then Pony, Volt Switch, Onyx, Rock Blast, or whatever. So maybe not to is a better play here, and then try to generate momentum from there with like a U turn into trapping uh, the Magnemite, or you know, U turning on the Pony or on the Pori that comes in and going for HJK, or then going into my going into my Pawn and then setting up Rocks or something. So maybe a little bit forced uh, by going Pawn here at first, is I'm able to I'm going to lose my juice, and this could have still been valuable for like the Magnemite in, in particular. So. Probably not great. I'm going to go for rocks here as my opponent's going to scald me. At this point, I want them to kill me, right? I really want them to kill me um, because if they kill me, then I can trap with Diglett. And once they're trapped, like we're fine. I want, so I want to knock here. They can scald, knock me out. And then I trap with Diglett. I remove their Marini and then I just click HJK literally three times or four times or however many times. And I kind of just win the game. So they understand this. They're going to go into Pony uh, and they're going to bury Juice back up to full. I'm going to go for knock, which is about 54. Fortunately, again, no burn. And I'm going to go for Sucker here, which uh, does not uh, go my way. So pause it there for a sec. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I was just looking at some notes because I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. So on this turn, I go Staryu as anticipated. Basically, it covers like DD. Uh, well, it doesn't really cover DD that well because DD it would just knock me out. But I still have my man foot full, right? So it covers pretty much everything. I can just pressure it. If they decide to, I'm anticipating them to put up rocks or something. Um or head smash or something at this point like star isn't super valuable it's gonna struggle a little bit uh versus like the mare and like the ponies obviously a speed tie and etc so i just gotta go star it's like the safest switching as their sturdy is broken so they're gonna go into porygon here and i'm gonna go for hydro um attempting to you know just get damage and unfortunately i missed there so it's not great as i'm gonna pivot into pawn and they are gonna wake up so definitely not what we're looking for but it is what it is as they do try attack me and i do get the knockoff now so the pony is able to be removed so that's really good for me removing pony is obviously great that was a big threat to my team and uh basically on this turn turn 22 i end up making kind of a bad play i end up going for like a sucker punch here just like keeping my trying to get this thing into range of like eq or something stupid um for my for my diglet but at this point like i need to keep my diglet around like onyx isn't a big threat and sucker punching could have been really bad there because they could very well just dd right so that could have been really really bad so that was definitely a bad play i should have just gone for iron head played it safe or go for knock um get the most value out of the turn and then go star you after right and then star you claims the kill with hydro pump and then we're back in business again so definitely was not ideal uh that was not a good play whatsoever we should not have risked dd for my end though i just didn't anticipate them to be dd because they just didn't click it the first time around which i think was the best time to click it um also another thing to note is that uh Morlo also took plus one head smash so that's why i wasn't scared of dd as much and i was able to go star you the first time on the onyx i forgot to mention that so Staryu comes in now. They're going to pivot into Marini here. Uh, I am going to go for a Hydro. I don't really care about like predicting this thing going for T-Bolt. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm pretty far ahead, I feel like, at this point. So my opponent's going to go into Porygon here as I am going to go for that T-Bolt. Get a little bit of damage off on that thing. At this point, I know they're going to T-Wave on this turn. I'm trying to catch my Mianfu. That's like the best bet. That's their best bet. So I'm going to go into my Natu on this turn. At this point, Natu is also not that useful. It's kind of just good for the Pori and the Marini, which... Like, it's fine, right? So, like, I'm fine with taking this risk um, as I can cripple this thing and then I can go into Fu now on the recover. So, that works out well. And basically, I'm just going to click HJK. I don't want to mess around with anything. I'm just going to click claim my kill. If they decide to go Marini, I can U-turn into my Natu and then I can U-turn again. Like, I, I don't see the reason really to do anything. Um, and I just want to get my kill here. So, I'm going to go for it. Remove this thing. Uh, remove the Onyx from play. And now I'm looking really good. Uh, Marini comes right back in. Marini is going to get U-turned on, and I'm going to go into my Natu. They're going to sludge bomb me. Fortunately, no, po or fortunately for them, they do poison, but it's fine, as they're going to go Magnemite here, as I just go for a U-turn. So that goes pretty well. At this point, I'm still not sure if they are, um, what do I call it, Scarf or not. So I don't want to go into my Diglett to trap. So I'm just going to go into Foo, play it safe. Um, Steel Beam, I guess, could be bad, but it's at this point, it's fine. Um... I can go for a knockoff here. Uh, basically, my thought process was if they are like juice, I can remove them, remove their juice outright. And if not, I get like uh, 
prog or if they're scarf, then I'll just be able to remove the scarf or whatever they decide to do. So I'm gonna get the knockoff on the Marini. Now they're gonna go into Pori as I just go for the U-turn. They do trace the regenerator, which is a little annoying, but it's okay. As I can just go into my Morlul here and fire off a Moonblast as uh, they get to as they throw off a T-Wave. So that's fine. And basically my thought process with the Morlul was I just want to basically uh, how do I say it? Weaken them so that way I can bring my Mianfu in and claim another kill. Um, they read that pretty well, and they're going to go for a double T-Wave here. Maybe I should have read that, but in retrospect, or what I realized at the same time is that I don't need my speed as much anymore. And actually getting the slow U-turn on the Marini is actually pretty valuable. So what I can do is, even if they decide to go for the double T-Wave, that's fine. Because they're still slower than my Mianfu here. So I basically claim a kill with HJK. If they decide to go into Marini, then I simply just go for a slow U-turn, trap it with my Diglett, and then I'm in business, right? So, uh, they are going to go into Marini now. I am going to, I believe, just go for HJK. No reason not to. Um, they're going to pivot to Magnemite as they reveal to be Berry Juice, but I go for that slow U-turn. Now that I know they're Berry Juice, I can go into my Diglett. I can click EQ. Thought process here is I EQ... Uh, knock this thing out then I get counter trap, but I have final gambit to knock out the Pori even though it regen its health back and then not to knocks out the Marini and that's gonna be the game so I'm gonna EQ the Magnemite down it goes Porygon's gonna come in it did regen a little bit but I made sure uh, to go for final gambit before going for like EQ and going for like para hacks and I end up knocking it out and then not comes in and it will be able to psychic and knock out the Marini and that was the game so uh GG to Raj it was very fun very fun game very cool team definitely more unconventional wasn't anticipating that very excited to use Moral and actually get it get it a win always cool to see that happen and most importantly very happy to get a team tour win for Little Cup it's been a long time uh, since I played. I've been actually no, it's been, it's been forever basically. I've been playing Little Cup for a while now. Uh, obviously, I did not do very well in Little Cup World Cup as a sub. I started off uh, zero two there. Obviously, didn't do too great in LPL as well. And then even in LCPL, I haven't been doing too good. So it was really great to get a dub here. Very excited about that. And of course, it was fun using a team, our, our Pokemon Morlo, and that doesn't get as much love. So. I think that's all there really is to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I'm very excited, and obviously we will get into game number two. So I'll pause it and get into the next one. Okay, and here we have game number two. We have Well facing off against Drud. So Drud is obviously bringing the Canadian Spikes team built by PAP. So um, the stats are pretty pretty obvious. It's like Spikes doable with a Violite, uh, Carve with a, uh, what is it? Just Protect, and then three attack standard stuff. Life Orb. I believe Submission Fire Punch, and then Bulk Up Timber, Berry Juice Ponyta, and SD Acro, Grassy Seed, uh, Grookey. So, Wells team, uh, we're, we gave him a pretty interesting squad. Uh, we gave him a Life Orb Nato, I believe, so that can be really good against stuff like uh, Timber, actually. Uh, which, because it's Spadef with Bulk Up, I believe it takes Psychic. With, if, as long as it has a Violet, it takes a Psychic from Natu. It takes one from Abra, I know that. I learned that from personal experience where I lost to this team. Or lost to something very similar. So, uh, Shad Shell Abra, that is. Uh, so, L Life Orb will be able to ensure a kill, but um, non-Life Orb Natu can, will fail to knock this thing out. Um, the bane of this team is always Staryu, actually. Staryu can be really, really good if it is spin. Even if it's not spin, it actually, you can see, is very hard to switch into. Um, especially when they lead off with Dwebble, you just Hydro Pump right off the bat, uh, generally, and then just put a lot of pressure on them um, because they're not Sturdy Juice, they're a Violite. So that's one thing to note. Um, I think Well leads off with Mianfu, but this the way this team is built and constructed is that it actually allows for knockoff into HJK. It allows for Dwebble to live knockoff into HJK and get like two layers up or whatever. So Staryu, I think, is generally the preferred lead against this team, uh, in my opinion. And if they decide to go with Grookey, you obviously have a uh, coughing in the back, right? To, like, Because like if you look at their team, like how do you cover a star? You either go Timber or Grookey, which um, coughing is like a fine lead against. Um, the Abra is definitely scary, though, for our team. Obviously, we have Grookey, you know, we have Pawn, but you have to be careful around that thing. Um, obviously, our Grookey keeps their Grookey, uh, Carvana in check. And then Pony can be problematic because we don't have a great... Uh, we do have a Staryu, so we at least have that, but it's still, it is still scary just because it is one speed tie away from winning a lot of games or uh, punishing us really hard. So again, we're just going to have to outlast. So we're going to see the Mianfu lead uh, versus the Timber lead. So Timber lead from the opponent is good call, trying to cover maybe our Staryu. Uh, but again, like I would have still led Staryu because you just pivot coughing, you fire off a wisp into the team or whatever, but it's fine. 
as uh one thing to note again right is uh how threatening ponyta is ponyta is really really good against our team especially because our natu is not um a violet right so if it was a violet natu as you can see we can take a wild charge from full which is still valuable actually i think it's very very valuable we can take wild charge or flare blitz right so like that is still good um but since we're life or we obviously cannot take that hit so that's very important to know is that ponyta is very very threatening and the opponent needs to use that utilize that as best as possible anyway so we're back here uh opponent makes a good play getting the uh free weak armor hit here that was definitely a good call on their part as now they're gonna get up rocks we're gonna go for the hjk unfortunately it does not ko so they are gonna be able to get an either a knock or a spike they decide to go for knock and that is good that's a good call on their part because that is going to open us up way more to ponyta especially with rocks up like even if we are regular not to we're also in a bad spot right because wild charge we saw how much it does um so we're forced to get out of there as poniard comes in the opponent is going to go hard for that psychic good call and we're gonna pivot back into star you here maybe anticipating a submission good uh nice nice read there from well covering from that and also understanding that i guess the best switch in for the opponent might be like something like timber or pony which so star you kind of covers as well okay anyway so we eat the submission pretty well here uh obviously this is life orb um i think generally so well has an option rapid spin go for you know go for tie go for rapid spin go for hydro pump do whatever uh they actually end up both risking tie and we end up getting the rapid spin off, which does quite a bit of damage actually, and also removes the rocks, which is good. But we do lose our star in the process, which is okay. Um, it would have been nice to just go for hydro. Honestly, that might have been able to kill. So we get the calc here. We can actually just check really quickly. Uh, versus Abra. Life orb. Yeah, hydro pump is a kill. Um. We don't want analytic though. I don't know why analytic is being activated here, because we have to we have to win the tie. I don't know how to how do I set this up. Okay, we'll make this like 18 speed. Okay, yeah. So there we go. It's a 6.3 percent chance to one hit KO. So I guess the rapid spin is a better play. Um, obviously, we would one in 16 chance to KO is not ideal, and maybe just getting rid of rocks is more beneficial for us if we're looking at our actual game here because not to um then isn't as pressured and, and as much and then uh, can fire off more life orb hits etc and uh, yeah so i guess i think it's fair either way it also keeps our coughing healthy which our coughing is going to be very valuable for like ponyta and grookey as well so i think it works out well um the opponent we are going to be going to our grookey now as that's going to be able to claim a revenge kill and abra goes down that seems fine uh they're not going to go into ponyta I didn't think they'd give, up that, give it up that easily, but I guess that's fair. Anyways, our Mianfu is going to come in as they are going to Flare Blitz us and just knock us out from full. Because we don't have a Violet anymore, so that's fine. Um, we're going to go into Coughing now, and uh, they're going to go into Carve here. Which was definitely risky, but to be fair, they don't have a great switch in, so that's fine. Um, Carvana is going to take quite a bit of damage, and... Uh, from there, we can go into our own Ponyard, which we'll be able to eat the flip turn and bury G's back up to full. So that worked out pretty well. They're going to go into Ponyta of their own here, and uh, we are just going to go for the Sucker. Popping this thing's Berry Juice. It makes sense. This thing is not as valuable anymore. It's kind of done its job, basically taking one hit from the Carve. Um, Timber is obviously going to beat it 1v1, and Grookey has Drain Punch, I believe. So, uh, yeah, Ponyard, Ponyard isn't super useful, especially because this is Grassy Seed. It's probably not super useful, so... Popping this thing's juice is definitely more valuable for us. So down it goes. Um, we now are forced to go into coughing as the opponent is going to high horsepower us as that comes a little bit short of KOing. And now they're going to flare blitz us, which I don't really understand that play. I feel like I guess they're trying to catch like the not to or something, but you can see how threatening we talk about how threatening the ponytail was, right? It, it's super, super threatening um, to our team. So had they just high horsepowered, Obviously, they don't know that we're not life orb, but still, uh, I think you could just gone for high horsepower and then kind of like gone from there in terms of play. Because you could like sack the Carvana to the Natu after, let's say, even if we went pivot and Natu, see that we're life orb and then go back into your pony and then wild charge and kind of go from there. So either way, it works out for us. We'll take it because down goes the pony, biggest threat to our team. Now Timber comes in and we're going to see Well make a smart play here and going Natu, understanding that for a standard team right timber is spadef timber we'll be able to take anyone hit from both pokemon and like go from there um so 
well understands the opponent's going to probably go for that and decides to go into Natu, which is going to be able to knock this thing off from full with a Life Orb Psychic. So down it goes. And uh, now the opponent's Carvana is going to come in. We can Shadow Ball this thing. 50-50 here, obviously, as well. Um, but also, from to an extent, they can't re really risk it. They saw that we're not Life Orb. So we, they can probably assume that we're SD Grookey, and so if they protect it as we went into our Grookey, and then we get a free SD off, then we might be able to win the 1v1 versus their own Grassy C Grookey uh, with Acro, because we can Drain Punch the Acro damage, etc. So um, that makes sense for the opponent. And now it just comes down to a speed tie, tried and true. So opponent is going to come in, and fortunately for us, they are going to drop to the Heat Wave. So. Worked out pretty well for us. Life Orb Natu puts in work as usual. Pokemon is actually this Pokemon is actually really really sick, um, and I would definitely recommend you guys try it out on the ladder or something. So, yeah, I think uh, it was a pretty well played game. I would have probably still led Star you and then trying to take advantage of coughing. Coughing definitely hits hard into this team. Um, getting the Abra for free was really nice. I feel like they could have definitely gone Pony there, and we were able to fortunately KO the Pony. But yeah, that Pony was very problematic. Um, so maybe keeping maybe removing the Star was an ideal. Um, because of how scary Ponytail could be, um, or like losing the star wasn't ideal, but Abra applies so much pressure to this team that we don't really have as many outs. Either way, well played well, <laughs> you know, pun intended, but, and, and got the dub. So we'll pause it there and uh, get into game number three. Okay, and here we have game number three. We have Mendes facing off against Paraplegic. So, uh, Excuse me, Mendes is bringing a pretty standard team, um, as usual, right? We have Gambit, Dig, uh, Violet, I believe, Pawn with the Juice, Coughing, uh, I believe with Wisp, if I remember correctly. It seems like it'd be Wisp with this type of team. Um, and then Mianfu, uh, Natu, and then Porygon, Offensive Core here. Well, not too poorly offense, of course. So, pretty good stuff. Um, our opponents bring definitely more unconventional team. They're using a Larvesta squad. So, obviously, the core here is Larv plus not too plus some sort of removal. And this time, they decided to rely on Timber. Uh, fortunately, we have Coughing plus uh, not too. It's like the best Timber checks in the world. So, that works out pretty well. Pharaoh, again, is always good. Uh, it's good to see not too, or good, good to see Pharaoh when you're having a not too, because that's shut down as well. Um, and then the Shellos is definitely interesting, but. We have, and to be fair, we don't actually have a lot of outs versus it. Um, this is the type of Pokemon that can just set up on coughing actually with Amnesia Boost and then go from there. So what we have to do is hopefully poison it because that's going to help. Sludge Bomb Poison is going to keep it low and then Gambit it with our Diglett at the right time. And that's going to be, that's going to, that's going to be basically the game plan. So Mendes always has to keep the, our Diglett around in order to basically do that. Or we just lose to Shellos off the bat because it's so hard to remove. Unless the opponent, like, unless we get a crit or some, you know, hacks, right? But he has to keep that in the back, uh, essentially. So that's kind of the game plan here. Besides that, Larvesta actually looks pretty terrifying as well. Don't have a fire resist, so Flare Blitz from that thing actually can hit pretty hard, even if it is defensive. Um, but the rest of the team doesn't look too scary. Natu on Natu. Uh, we have, like, Pawn, Natu, and uh, Porygon for the opposing Natu, so we should be okay. Anyways, we're going to lead with Natu, anticipating maybe the uh, Timber lead. Opponent leads uh, with Larvesta correctly. Obviously, this is a good lead against us. It can hit us very hard. Uh, they decide to pivot into their own Natu, so that might indicate to us that it's like offensive or something. Probably not, but just something to keep in mind because I feel like U-Turn was definitely free there. But they decide not to risk it. Maybe they're afraid of Life Orb. I don't know. But they're gonna psych we're gonna psychic into this thing and now go for a U-Turn, get the fast U-Turn off. But again, Porygon is pretty comfortable coming in here. Oh, it is Trace Porygon. Excuse me. That's right, this is, oh, 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 I forgot. This is a Trace Porygon and I believe a Scarf Pawn here team. That's what the team was, right, right, right. My bad, I forgot. So that's the offensive core is actually like the Mianfu Pawn offensive core and then we're using utilizing defensive Pori, right, excuse me. Um, but yeah, Scarf Pori, Scarf Pawn actually doesn't look that great, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, in a game with uh, Larve, Shellos, and Pharaoh, and Timber, it's pretty bad. So maybe we can catch like the Natu or the Diglett off guard, but those those aren't even that big of threats to our team so anyways we are very comfortable taking this hit as they're able to go into the timber that's fine we're gonna go into our foo here to eat a knock that's you know perfectly fine just preserving the coughing's health uh for now um which makes sense as we're gonna fake out here fortunately dodge a burn and now we're gonna go back into natu as we eat that u-turn here so 
Diglett's gonna come in. This is definitely indicative of Life Orb, uh, Rock Slide, like right off the bat. So Mendez is gonna make that aggressive play and going into the uh, Porygon. Obviously, the opponent could have Life Orb EQ'd, and we, I think we'd have gotten to a KO'd, but who Life Orb EQ's a Natu? It's crazy. So we we're able to, also, to be fair, from their end, they don't have a lot of great options versus Natu, so this is fine play. Although, I would maybe even go on Shallows or something. I don't know. Anyways, but we do trap it with a, uh, see, uh, with, what do you call it? Um, trace so Porygon is going to try attack here obviously we dodge the 2 8 KO opponent's gonna sub up we are just gonna continue to try attack um, they're gonna EQS now they get the low roll Mindy's just gonna try attack knock them out that's fine obviously keeping Porygon low is good for them but removing their Diglett is actually really valuable for us um, as well because that just allows us to play a little bit more aggressively with our Mianfu and we won't be able to ever get trapped or have a risk of speed tie with our Diglett or something like Sucker Punch from their Life Orb Diglett could do a lot of damage to ours right and then we lose our final Gambit etc so that's fine that works out pretty well also our Natu looks pretty good or our Natu continues to look really really good now because now they really can't touch us with much on their team um, so they're gonna knock us out with a U-turn here as their own Natu comes in, but that's fine. We can go into our Scarf Pawn and remove it outright. So Scarf Pawn is able to claim one kill here, but unfortunately what it is going to do is uh, enable the opponent to go into their Timber as we're going to play aggressive. Good play here from Indies. Goes for the knockoff. Understanding the opponent's probably just going to knock. Um, and we don't really need our Scarf anymore. So I think actually this works out pretty well because Scarf actually we don't really want. We don't really care for it. We're, not, we're faster than everything already. So good play there from Indies as we're able to remove this thing's of Violite. And we're just going to go for the Iron Head here, anticipating the double knock. Really, really nice play uh, from Indies. And now this thing is in range of a Sucker Punch, I believe. Um, so Mendes is just going to... Actually, no. It's just, it's in range technically. It's like a 1 in 16 roll. It's a really high roll. So I think Mendes ends up switching out here, anticipating the mock, um, and is going to go into Fu. Obviously, he has to be afraid of the HJK. Para is going to go into Lara, fish for that burn. Finally gets it with a fake out. Good play there. Um, and we just kind of, you just kind of concede it at some point, right? We just have to concede it. So our Ponyard is now going to take a U turn, and they're going to go into Timber. And this is where Mendes ends up going for that roll and gets it. So that works out pretty well. Timber goes down for free, and they're now going to attempt to Shellos us. So we are going to go into coughing. Would have been really cool is if we had our coughing knocked off and we use neutralizing gas thief to remove the shellos as a violet with because sticky hold would no longer work. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't the play. We don't have that set up. I don't think we even have uh, thief. I think we're wisp, as I said. So we do get that sludge bomb poison. So that's pretty huge. That's going to keep this thing as low as possible. And oh no, we're T bolt. Excuse me. Um, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, it's T-Bolt and then Scarf Pond helps with the with Tim or with Tyrant. So that's fine. We're just gonna T-Bolt this thing down, keep it as low as possible, fish for those poisons, uh, fish for, sorry, fish for those crits while we can, uh, waste some PP. Uh, we're eventually gonna go into Pawn here. I think this is a good play from Mendes. Might as well go for the flinches. No risk in recent. No no point in risking the coughing. So. Um, might as well go for it. Opponent's gonna curse up. We're gonna see this kind of play out. But again, all Mendes really needs to do is keep this thing low and find the perfect opportunity to switch into Diglett to final Gambit. So Iron Head is gonna knock this thing out. And also Para might not even see that. So might just knock out the uh, Ponyard at some point um, when it's not when he's not exactly at full. And then Diglett will just come in. So Mendes just plays it safe. Decides to just keep Iron Heading. Gets the crit there. Iron Head. Iron Head, get some flinches. Um, another Iron Head here. We're gonna go for another one, keep this thing as low as possible. Now the facade comes out, and this is perfect, right? Because they took the Iron Head chip, they took the they took the poison chip, they're in range of Diglett's final gambit, down it goes. We do have to play a little careful because actually the Larvesta could become problematic, but all we really need to do is uh, what we really need to do is knock it off, and then our Psychic does a lot more damage with our Natu. So, and because we've kept, I believe we kept our Natus of Violet so far, we should be okay by taking Flare Blitz or something. So, we're going to knock it off here. That works out well. Um, at this point, we don't have any reason to keep our Mianfu around, so we're just going to HJK as a Flare Blitz. Uh, and yeah, basically, we just have to get this thing low into range of 2-8 KO. Like, it's already in 2-8 KO range, but we just have to get rid of our Mianfu, basically. So... We're going to HJK again, waste a couple of turns. They're going to go into coughing, and we're now going to go for a sludge bomb into a fire blast. Actually, does not knock out Pharaoh, which is interesting. Um, I guess you never see this interaction, but yeah. 
Anyways, we're going to knock this thing out. Now the opponent is going to go into the larve, but all is good. They are going to knock us out with the Flare Bliss because they were able to knock us off. But they can't knock 2 it KO us, and we can 2 it KO them very, very comfortably. So they're going to go for the Morning Suns here. Uh, we're going to continue to Psychic. We're getting, we're making progress incrementally because they're only heal healing up 48 and we're doing 52. So they're losing about 1 HP. Um, so eventually we Psychic. Uh, we do get the spit drop here. They're going to Morning Sun, and that's going to pretty much be the game. So, Psychic knocks them out, and that is going to be that. We can check the Calc real quick. Um, if we check the Calc, and if I do this, does that work? Oh, nice. Okay, cool. If we just check the Calc, and we do Natu, Bulky Attacker, versus the Larvesta, Physically Defensive Pivot with 13 defense, it's doing about 42 to 57. So we were out of range of two, two we were in two hit KO range, uh, out of one hit KO range at that point. So we were in a fine spot to just two hit KO that thing. So that worked out pretty well. Well played to Mendes. He picks up a pretty nice win there. And I don't think there's really much else to say. So we'll pause it, get into game number four. Okay, and here we have game number four. We have PDT facing off against Excelsior. So PDT's team is actually a SD Grookey squad. Uh, looks pretty similar to what I brought uh, in week four. So. SD Grookey here actually looks pretty incredible. Might be able to set up an SD and kind of go to town. Uh, obviously, we need to set up, set some stuff up. Preferably, knock off the Pharaoh, knock off the Port, or knock off the uh, Marini. Uh, remove this thing's juice if it is juice, or a Violet if it's a Violet, and get the Timber a little bit weakened. But you know, that's all going to happen over the course of a game naturally. It's not something that you have to like really plan out. Little Cup games get people. Excuse me, Pokemon get worn down left and right, knockoffs go all crazy here and there, so you don't have too much to worry about um, in that sense. So PDT actually has a pretty decent matchup. The Abra is very threatening, actually, um, but we do have, like, Spadef not to help with, like, not with Abra rolls, and if it is Life Orb, obviously we can trap it, and if it's not Life Orb, we do take those hits a little bit better, although it's still going to be tough, actually, because this team is a little bit more on the Abra weak side, so... Don't think there's really much else to say. They have a Timber again, which I don't think is that great. It is good with the car of Tyron, Porygon running around, but I don't know. It's not that great, in my opinion. So we're going to lead off with Fu against the Abra. Uh, we're going to pivot into Pawn here. Good play as they do decide to go for the sub. You have to respect the inner focus here, especially when they lead off with it. So understandable from PDT's end. And it's now going to pivot into Natu as they do go for that focus punch. So good play here from PDT. Really smart play because what this is going to allow him to do is U-turn, break the sub, go into Grookey, go into Diglett, do whatever you want to do. Because um, we know that uh, if it is, uh, I guess if it is uh, Life Orb, we'll be able to tell by the damage and we can actually just check the calc really quickly while we're here. Might as well, right? So if we look at Natu, we already have it set up versus an Abra. You can see Shed Shell, Shadow Ball is only going to do 76 to 95. And then Abra with a Life Orb is going to do 85 to uh, 109. So it's 75% chance to one hit KO. And since we already took one point of damage, you can put this as 20. It's still a, oh yeah, 75% chance to one hit KO. So if we get KO'd, we know the, we know the roles. We know have a better, much better idea. And we can kind of go from there in terms of game plan, right? Oh, zip. There we go. My bad. Anyway, so we have all this set up. Focus Punch, uh, we know we can use U-Turn here. And unfortunately, the opponent is going to crit. And that is going to be pretty tough. So now we're forced to go into Diglett. The opponent is going to switch out. So now we know they're not Life Orb. So we know that crit mattered. And that makes us... That puts us pretty far behind, not going to lie. That puts us really, really far behind. Because um, Abra gets off scotch free We lose our Natu for pretty much nothing. And we're just in a tough spot overall. So... Uh, Mianfu is going to come in now as they go for the Heavy Slam. Don't have a great switch into this thing, so we're just going to go for Fu and knock this thing off. A double Heavy Slam going to come out here, and we're going to actually have a hard time breaking past this thing, to be honest. So we're going to go into Grookey now. Um, with our Violet, we should be okay, but we still take 50% or so. Uh, and the opponent is at about 50. They are going to switch out of here um, as we do go for that SD. And we kind of have to hope to break here. So we're going to go for the Drain Punch. As you can see, Pharaoh is still very bulky, and it is going to be able to take that hit. And they rightfully go for the Thunder Wave here. Or cor not rightfully, correctly go for the Thunder Wave here. So that works out well. We are going to be able to claim the 2 at KO, but Grookey is crippled now, and that's going to make things a lot more annoying for us. Especially because Timber hasn't been knocked yet. So Or Marini, too, for that matter. So we're going to see a double in a Timber. 
as we're going to double in the pawn. Um, maybe, I think from PDT's end, he was anticipating knock or sludge bomb, and the opponent uh, decides to go into timber. I don't know why, I don't know if that was a double on their end, but uh, at this point, Grookey, I think, still lived a sludge bomb. We can actually calc that as well. Uh, let's do that. There we go. So, Grookey, if we are a Violite. LC wall, yeah. It does 66 to 95. So I think we lived it. And plus two glide would have been able to two a KO. So definitely a weird switch from the opponent because PDT could have very well just stayed in and grassy glided, trying to get damage off. Um, but the it worked out, I guess, is all we can say. So we'll we'll go back to the game here. But yeah, definitely was unconventional, but it does put us in a tough spot, as you can see. So uh, they're gonna we're gonna go for rocks and they're gonna knock us off. That's fine move our juice we don't really have a great switch in we're not going to go into marini and they're going to go for the double knock good play on their end and i believe they go for the thunder punch on the next play and knock us out so it's definitely tough you can't really do much about it um at this point we're super far behind we're going to gambit here um and then kind of try to make something happen with our foo but it is going to be tough mudbray is going to come in mudbray is going to get ko'd by the hjk or high jump kick excuse me uh, now Abra comes in, Ponyard, they're gonna sub, we don't have a focus punch switch in, and we basically lose the game. Well, we can, we can try to pivot around, but it, it's just not possible, right? Focus punch doing a little too much. We're gonna go Pawn here. Um, there's a possibility where PDT can just, like, go for a U-turn on a double focus punch or something. Um, so, like, right here, PDT could go for, uh, you know like soccer or something right it's always a 50 50 definitely a little risky from excelsior's side just because um he wasn't losing much but it's like keeping to click the right move um keeping on clicking the right move i mean eventually he'd have to make a play but he's super far ahead but it, it ends up sealing the game no matter what so ponyard now comes in and that's gonna basically be it so focus punch knocks us out and uh grookey uh will be we'll get fully parried so that doesn't mean that definitely a tough game the first crit uh definitely set us pretty far behind i'm not gonna lie not much you can do if you're a pdt you did the best you could and uh, yeah we end up going three and one in ss so we'll pause it there and get into game number five okay and here we have the gen 7 games so we switch up the lineup a little bit we have ninja dog in sm facing off against Todao. so definitely a highlight match here uh Todao is like probably one of the best sm players if i'm not mistaken um and ninja obviously is just a very just one of the best little cup players in general so always fun to see these guys play against each other see uh, either one of these guys play and uh, watch them play each other is also pretty exciting as well so uh toto's team is um i guess you know pretty standard as as it could get you know uh you have the mian fuvolabi onyx uh, and then you have like the Fungus Spritz, Fungus Spritzy Core, and then a Staryu. And then our team's a little bit more unconventional, I guess. You have the Timber, which obviously is still good in SM because of Volibee and being able to mock punch that. And it actually looks pretty decent here um, if you are Ice Punch for the Fungus. Um, also able to cover Star decently well. Um, our Ponyard, I believe, is Scarf, so that can help trap something like Staryu with Pursuit at some point. Um, which could be valuable valuable because Staryu could be a little annoying and that's gonna open up our Mudbray a lot more Which actually looks pretty decent into the squad because it can, it can hit pretty hard um, So removing Staryu could be helpful for that um, Fungus is Fungus. It's nothing really to know and then our Staryu I believe is Z Ice So that could be valuable as a nuke to hit something really hard here. So I think we can get into the game here I haven't played a lot of SM recently, so a little out of touch, but I think I remember this was a pretty hype game. Uh, anyway, so we're going to see the Volibee lead versus the Mianfu lead. Obviously a good lead uh, for the opponent. Um, they're going to fake us out turn one. Uh, I guess Ninja does not want to take damage right now if he can help it. And decides to pivot into the Fungus and try to get a Spore off if he can. So, uh, Or at least put the pressure on a Sludge Bomb, right? So he's going to rightfully anticipate the Fungus comes in and is going to go for Sludge. Makes sense from Todas then. You're not going to let something go to sleep this early in the game. So um, now the Mianfu is going to come out. Ninja is going to go for another Sludge Bomb, fishing for that poison, and is going to stay in this turn to go for the Spore. So nice play there from Ninja Dog, putting this thing to sleep, and uh, now we're in a pretty great position starting off. We can uh, go for one Sludge here, just get a little bit of chip damage, and now go into our Mudbray, as unfortunately I do get a very early wake up, and that is going to put us in a tough spot, because the Staryu can now come in, 
and apply pressure. So we're forced to go into Volibee now. Volibee is going to take the Hydro, take it from full, and we will to Hydro Pump back up, you know, Barry Juice back up to full. So good call on Ninja not taking that damage earlier, understanding that, hey, Volibee's Barry Juice is still going to be valuable. Um, as now Ponyard is going to come in and T-Bolt is going to do quite a bit of damage. But we can go for the knock here. We are Scarfed, um, and we do want to remove this Things of Eyelight if we can. So we're going to go for the knock and remove Mianfus. So that works out well. Um, now we pivot back into Volibee. They are going to go for that slow U-turn. And uh, we're really going to go for the U-turn on the switch, excuse me, as we're going to weak armor up. And uh, we're going to reveal HP Grass. And Toadow is going to go straight into Onyx. Interesting to do this because... Uh, you know, Volby does run HP Grass pretty often, so going Onyx on this when you have plus two speed probably wasn't ideal, and they lose Onyx for uh, pretty, pretty pretty much free, right? There's not really much else to say, and what this opens up is our uh, Brave Birds, actually, from our Volby. so this looks good. We're going to go into Mudbray now as Spritzy comes in. We're going to eat a Moonblast, take basically nothing, take about a third, um, and we'll be able to kind of do whatever we want. We're going to go for the EQ and do about 63 to Staryu, which is awesome. We're now going to go into Pawn as we eat an Ice Beam, and now can Pursuit Trap this thing or whatever. Um, it's a little bit of 50-50, but we just do get the play right. We're able to go for the Pursuit, knock this thing out, and now we're looking really, really good. Volaby is going to come in. Volaby is not super scary. We have our own Volaby. We're going to eat the Brave Bird. We're going to proc our weak armor. And they are going to be afraid of their uh, of our own Brave Bird, so they're going to sack the Mianfu, so that works out well. We're going to go for the double down here. And now their Volibee comes in, and our Mudbray is going to come in. Uh, Brave Bird is going to fail to KO, as they are going to recoil into Berry Juice range, but we are going to be able to throw up the rocks, which is going to limit what this Volibee can do. So, good play there. What we can do now is go into our Staryu. Staryu can click Z Ice, knock out the Volibee, down it goes. And we're looking really, really great, because Spritzy um, and Fungus we should be okay against, because we still have actually our Ponyard, which can Iron Head into the team. And once we knock off the Fungus, then we can kind of win the Fungus War. We're always going to win the Fungus War in that sense. So we can see that we put them to sleep here, no reason not to. Uh, Ninja Dog is just going to synthesis up, and Fungus should be able to kind of win this game on uh, on its own. So Fungus comes in, Sludge Bomb comes out. At this point, we just have too many sacks and we have too many knockers that it's going to make this too too good of a situation to be in. So we're going to Sludge Bomb a couple more times. They're going to Sludge Bomb. We're going to Sludge Bomb, try to bait out that synthesis. They're going to Giga Drain here. It's classic Fungus War stuff. Eventually, we're going to go into Staryu as a sack. We're going to go for Psychic, keep this thing as low as possible. We don't care if this thing dies, it's useless at this point. All we need is Timber to knock this thing off, put us to sleep, go into our own Fungus, and now win the 1v1 because they are going to be forced to synthesis a lot more than we are. So this is, this is uh, Sludge Bomb knocks this thing out, and then we have Iron Head in the back if, for some reason, Fungus can't beat this thing 1v1 either. So we're going to Sludge Bomb, does about 50, put this thing to sleep, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb, that is the game. So Ninja pick, picks up a pretty nice win there. Um, the HP Grass play was definitely the play of the game, and then from there, trapping the Staryu was also very nice, but I think Ninja just played really smart and got a good dub. So we'll pause it there and get into uh, the next game. Okay, and here we have uh, Oras. So we have Fran facing off against DC, and Fran doesn't like spikes too much, but decides to use it. Uh, you use it this week, and unfortunately we run into a pretty bad Spikes matchup. You obviously see Defiant, Ponyard, and then obviously the Gold Standard being Gold Standard being Snivy. Um, our Spikes team is pretty interesting. I don't know about Snubble, to be honest. Just kind of a random Snubble on a offense team, but you know you want to use like Life or Babra, which can be a lot, lot more value. But it is what it is. We'll see how this goes down. Snivy and and Ponyard are gonna make this tough, um, but maybe we can make something happen with our Scrafty in the end game or something. So let's get into the game. We are going to see the Mianfu lead from the opponent as we lead off with Ghastly. Nice play. Um, and now we're going to go into the Snubble as we eat the knock. That's fine. We lose our Berry Juice, but we do have Thief generally. So this is not not all hope is lost as they're going to go into Snubble of their own. We are going to go for the CC here, I guess, trying to catch maybe the Onyx. And now we're going to be able to Thief this thing, steal this thing's Violite. Down it goes. They're going to go for the T-Wave. That's fine. As now we can go into our Surskit, anticipating a Thief and giving them a Choice Scarf. I like that play. I like that play a lot from uh, from uh, Fran. 
a little cheeky, but it works out. So we're going to go for the Scald here as they decide to go into Onyx. They're going to bury G Sturdy Juice back up to full, fortunately or unfortunately uh, for us. No burn, and they're going to Rock rock Blast and knock us out. So we don't get spikes up, or we don't get webs up, but we're, we weren't going to, right, in this game with Snipey around. So losing that tie there kind of sucks. Would have been nice if the Scald burned this thing or Scalded down, but it is what it is. We're going to go into Drill here as now Snivy is going to come in and we're going to go for that EQ, which does about 42%. We're going to go Ghastly here as the opponent is going to sub. And now this thing, this is where things get problematic because they can glare us as we try to break their sub. And that is going to really limit our Snivy counterplay for the rest of the game. As you can see, they can just start clicking Life Orb uh, or so they can start clicking Leaf Storm and we're kind of in a tough spot. So we're going to get the Wisp off here and now we're going to eat an Ice Beam. We're going to bury G-Spec up to full as we HP fight, doing about 30. Uh, we're going to pivot into the pawn on the recover. Good play there from Fran. And uh, now we are going to go for knock, removing this thing's item. So that works out well. Uh, we do reveal to be life orb, but we do get T-waved in the process, which is not ideal. <laughs> and now they're just going to PP stall, or they're going to parastall us a little bit. We are doing some decent damage, but... And with the burn, so they are going to force eventually be forced to switch out, and our iron head is doing about 57. But the fact that we're paired really makes this tough. As Snubble is going to come in now, Snubble is going to get U-turn on, they're going to go into Snivy, they can, they do fail to knock us out, and Fire Punch is going to do a good chunk, but it doesn't really matter, because damage on Snivy isn't that important, um, and they're able to claim a KO there, which is more important, so, they, we are going to be forced to go for speed time, it's our, only, it's our only game plan, and fortunately we do win it, but we are still really, really, really far behind, so, opponent's going to go into uh, Snubble, we're going to switch into Ghastly to eat a play rough, which does not appreciate it, now we're gonna, they're going to sack the Porygon, excuse me. Um, we're going to go for HP Fight. They're going to go into Fu, knock us out because we're slow. And their Paraspam strategy actually ended up working pretty well, as you can see. Um, it really crippled us, and we couldn't really do much about it. So we're going to go um, eat the EQ. And Onyx is going to knock out the Pawn with the EQ. Now Scraggy comes in. They can try to make something happen, but the fact that they have Snubble still and Intimidate means that even a crit HJK wouldn't get the job done and play rough will be able to knock them out. So that is going to be that, basically. Onyx is going to be the sack of choice. Snubble now can just Intimidate Shuffle a little bit, and uh, that is going to be the game. So DC picks up the win. Congratulations, and good game. Uh, definitely was tough. Good matchup from their end. Like, had a good call, and they got a good, really good matchup, and it worked out. So... We will pause it there and get into the black-white game. Okay, and here we have our black-white game. We have Plaz against Fatty. So Plaz is bringing a Smoochum uh, Hail offense. And unfortunately, what we see from the opponent's side is a this core that Fatty actually likes a lot, which is the Bronze or Larvesta core. And Larvesta is exactly the worst Pokemon we want to see here. Uh, obviously, Chinchou is like our resist, but... Being able to stuff these two is really good, and obviously Bronzor is also really good. So we have to figure out a way to break past these two. Um, and we actually have some similarities, right? We have Ghastly, Chinchou, and Mianfu. They're actually packing a double water core, which is interesting. But the main focal point here is definitely the Larvesta Bronzor. So we'll have to see what Plaz decides to do. Uh, we're going to see the Ghastly lead as Larvesta lead. Plaz is blo Plaz, excuse me, Plaz has brought a lot of bulky Ghastly in this tour. So... Plaz ends up going for um, staying in, um, anticipating Fatty not to want to risk this because Flare Bliss does not kill Bulky uh, Ghastly, I don't think. Um, but it does, you know, I don't know. Fatty decides to end up just going for it, trusts his gut, gets the Flare Blitz kill, and. Uh, Basically, I think what Plaz was saying is that he didn't anticipate Larvesta to be risked this early when it kind of is like the match winner in a lot of senses. So. It ends up working out pretty well for Fatty as now we're down to Ghastly. Plaz is going to try to make some double switches to make stuff happen. Like covering, you know, catching the Chinchou here is really nice. Um, but at the end of the day, that's like, what do you do? Because Bronzor still can just sit on this, sit all over this thing. You know, Blizzard it does 26, literally does 26%, which is absolutely nothing. Mianfu is going to come in now as the opponent's going to throw up their rocks. And now they're going to make progress against their Snover and their Smoochum. Ghastly is going to come in now as we go for the Stone Edge. Good play here. Really nice play from Plaz trying to catch that Larve. Um, but I don't think... It might have been a little overambitious because we saw that it was Scarf Larve. So I don't think if you're Fatty, you're going to bring that in and try to get it knocked. You'd rather just go Ghastly, let that get knocked, and maybe, you know, trick after that to, like, take an item or something. But we end up getting a crit, which is nice. They're going to end up going for the Pain Split as we are just going to go for the slow turn. 
We're gonna go into our Smoochum now, but again, you know, we have, yes, yeah, Smoochum is really cool. It's very, very strong, um, but what do we do? Like, they can go into Bronzor. Blizzard here is only gonna do about 28%. They're gonna Orenberry back up, that's fine. Um, and yeah, we're just kind of in a tough spot, as you can see. So we're gonna go back into food. They're gonna recycle probably on this turn. They kind of have to. All right, we're gonna go for the U-turn here. Definitely risky, I think, from Fatty's end because we could have very easily knocked, but I guess he understands that we're gonna want to keep our foo, not drop to a psychic, so we're very likely or very unlikely to knock here. So that works out well. Chin Chow is gonna go come in now, and we're in a tough spot. Like it works out well when I say that is for for Fatty. As you can see, we're in a really awkward position here. We don't really have much to do. Eventually, there Chin Chow is gonna come in on our own Chin Chow. But it's not like this is a really good matchup for us. We do miss that. They do we do we do dodge the hydro, but then we also miss HJK. So it's not like that worked out that well for us either. And yeah, it's just not going Plaza's way really. Uh, hydro pump here is going to connect as uh, we do water absorb that up, which is nice. Mianfu is now going to come in as we go for a volt switch, nice and aggressive. Bring our Smoochum in, which should be able to put in some work. Psychic here, unfortunately, just going to kind of bounce off this bronze ore. And uh, we're going to Nasty Plot up now. So that's really cool. Nasty Plot, Smoochum. You don't expect to see that. I, you know, you usually anticipate Scarf. So Smoochum is able to get that off. We know this thing is probably not going to be able to touch us because, you know, Toxic, Stealth Rock, Recycle, Psychic. So uh, now Plasma might be able to make some progress. Psychic here is going to get a Spadef drop. Psychic doesn't break our sub. Hail is kind of helping chip along this thing. So now Blizzard is going to be able to knock this thing out with the minus Spadef. And we're looking good. We should be able to get maybe one more kill as Skull is going to break our sub and Psychic is going to crit and knock out Staryu. So that works out well. And while we do get a lot of value here, the Larvasta just comes right back in and claims a kill with U-Turn. So good play on their end. Um, Mianfu comes in. We are going to be forced to eat the Mianfu uh, fake out and then U-turn into our Chin Chao. But as you can see, we don't really have a great HJK switch in. So Chin Chao is going to drop. We're not going to go for Stone Eyes trying to make something happen. Doesn't work out there. Ghastly is going to come in. We're going to go for slow turn. They are going to miss an HJK here, which is pretty funny. And we're going to get the T-Wave off, but they can just pivot back into Chin Chao on the Psychic. Heal Bell that right off and uh, knock us out or get knocked out. Get another kill with HJK. Uh, Stone Edge, unfortunately, is not going to get the job done. Oh, excuse me. Let's actually look at that turn really quickly. So we're going to go. We're going to go for Stone Edge here, and this is kind of the problem, right? With with a ga with a ghastly in the back, we don't um we don't have a ton of options. We don't want to click the HJK button. Also with the Larvesta in the back, so Fatty can stay in here and just click. Um, anticipate that we're going to probably not go for Stone Edge or not going to go for HJK and just go for the slow turn. Obviously, it's a 50 50, but it's like not really because, like, who really HJKs in this situation? So, I can see it from Fatty's end as he gets a lot of momentum off of this. And now, uh, slow uh, or Flare Bliss is going to be able to claim a kill. Down goes the Snover. Porygon is going to take about 50 as recover we're gonna porygon it up now we're gonna go into ghastly as we actually end up dodging wisp which is actually pretty cool and uh, we're gonna see some pain split action eventually psychic is gonna knock this thing out hjk is gonna knock out the pori and very last turn very very last turn of the game plaza was able to bring it back to the point that maybe this hjk and actually we see that the trace on the flame body actually activates here so that burn plus um Hail is going to get into range of 60%, and there's a chance here for HJK to maybe knock this thing out. Um, if we check the calc, let's check it real quick. Go to black white. Uh, and foo it's hard to say what our sets are but we'll just assume fast defensive or something like that and hjk would have done 43 to 56 so there was definitely a chance there um probably not actually if you're looking at it again because i think they were at about 66 so we might have had to crit but at least we could have had a chance unfortunately we do miss and that's going to be the game but that's just how it goes there's not really much to say it's just pokemon being pokemon so congratulations to fatty gg and we'll pause it there and get into game number eight
Okay, DPP. Uh, not much to say. There's no team preview of Gorax versus Alkion. Definitely gonna be a good one. Let's see. We see the coughing lead versus the Machop lead. Um, obviously, we can... We have a pretty good matchup here because we can get that fast Wisp off. We do eat a Confusion, which is not great, but it's okay. As we do hit ourselves in Confusion, we're going to eat another Dynamic Punch. Uh, not ideal, but it is what it is. As we do snap out of Confusion here, we're able to get the T-Bolt off, doing about 40. And they're just going to continue to Dynamic Punch us down. And understandably so, this Machop has definitely lost its usefulness. So, um, just Dynamic Punching and trying to get as much value out of it makes sense. So... They're doing a good job. They're getting a lot of confusions. Fortunately, we we're able to get the burn or get the T bolt off now. Uh, but as you can see, we've wasted our coughing's item, and we're down to 50%. So, Snover comes in now. Definitely a weird position to be in. We're gonna just sack the coughing at this point, which I think is fair. Um, and now we're gonna get this free switch into our Munchlax, which could, you know, be superpower, fire punch, all those things. We're gonna go for the ice punch here, anticipating a switch. Good play. Duskull comes in, um, and we're gonna go pivot a Stunky on a Wisp. So. We're going to go with Wisp here. That's fine. Um, and uh, we are going to go for the Crunch and knock them out. So that works out well. The opponent's now going to go into their Gligar. Obviously, we're outsped and scared of the EQ. And they are going to reveal the SD, which is definitely terrifying. No way about it. So fortunately, we do live here. And we are going to be able to knock this thing out with a nice punch. But we do lose a lot of resources on our Lax, which is obviously, you know, the best Pokemon in the tier. So... Facade from the Talo is going to come out now. Talo is always a very cool Pokemon to see just because of how threatening it is. Um, fortunately, we have Snover in the back to pick this thing off with maybe like a Scarf Blizzard or an Ice Shard. So they're going to pivot into Lax to cover for that as they take about 23%. And we are going to get Pursuit Trapped here. So not ideal. We're going to go into Stunky here and Stunky does get basically a kill with Explosion, kind of. So we're going to go for the explosion here and knock out the lax and things are looking pretty good. You know, they only have a Snover and a Talo left, but unfortunately for us, we don't have much Talo. Uh, we don't have much Snover counterplay, to be honest. So Gligar is going to be able to take this hit and uh, we are going to knock them out with the Stone Edge. But the problem is, is the Snover afterwards. We've already used our coughing and our lax and... Our last just can't handle it. We don't have HP Fire. We don't have anything on the Chin Chow. They can SD up. And we are just going to get knocked out. So that is that. We end up going 4-4 four and four here on the week. So pretty pretty good. At this point, we haven't lost a week. We've uh, either won or tie all of them, which is pretty awesome. And yeah, I don't think there's really much else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.